getting toward the end, so I just wanted to you know, kind of bring up a few other issues. Uh, uh, one of the issues we haven't talked about is, is, is costs. And in, in are these gains that we're seeing in survival, um, uh, do people think that, you know, or how are we going to think about the cost issue? I, I struggle a lot mm -hmm. thinking about what this is going to do to the cost issue, but I also struggle with things like duration of therapy with, with IO agents, with frequency of therapy of IO agents. These are all the very expensive drugs. I just kind of want to get some sense of, of the panel's thoughts about that. Well, I'll start. You know, the question really, I mean, I was involved a lot in my institution, former institution, about cost and with the implementation of MACRA and these episodic care models. Uh, and this is something that community physicians and even academic physicians are going to have to struggle with. I will uh, pledge that I am not fluent in cost analysis. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think a lot of us are. And then the other question is, should we be in the business of factoring in cost when we're making these decisions if these decisions are uh, secondary to OS advantages that we're seeing? So uh, I think that we are going to have to learn more about cost, whether we like it or not. Uh, and But how to integrate that into our calculus and decision making is going to be exceptionally difficult. Um, it really is. I think we have... Uh, so much that we have to digest and integrate in terms of the decision making. So I, I think it'll it'll be very hard, but whether we like it or not, I think we're going to have to do it. It may not be now, uh, but it may be coming in the near future. But if we yeah. see significant survival advantages, then we have to put our collective efforts together to make sure that pharma and healthcare systems are able to make these drugs available to our patients. You know, uh, the head of pharma, the the CEO of any one of the companies that makes these uh, agents can change that entire cost analysis with a single keystroke on his laptop. You cannot change survival curves like that. So while I agree we have to factor that in, our main responsibility is to our patients. And if something is looking better, not just PFS, but really an OS benefit, it's incumbent on us not to deny that patient availability of that agent because of the cost, but to see how we can make it globally available. Uh, there are biosimilars that are replacing some of these uh, agents, and uh, pharma is going to have to uh, realize that. Um, in terms of cost, uh, the regimen I was using before all of this occurred, certainly before I converted to Pem Carbo, Pembro was Bev Pemetrex at Carbo. Yeah. So, your 150 trial is wonderful, except it wasn't really using the regimen I had typically used before. So I would love to see a trial of Carbo, Pem, uh, Pembro, or Tezo with uh, uh, Bevacizumab, but imagine the cost there. There are three proprietary drugs. So uh, it's an attractive trial. Uh, patients don't have neuropathy or hair loss that they typically suffer with taxanes, but it may just be untenable.